Hey guys, so tonight we're going to read the case of Ayla Reynolds, who's been missing since, this is, a, this is an older case, this is about 10 years old now, um, very close to 10 years old. Um, she went missing December 16, 2011. She was 19 months old. Now I've got this up here because I'm going to read this for um, some people who might not be familiar with the case before I go into it. Um, this case had, uh, you know, I, I, apparently it's a very big case and I had not heard of it. That happens very often. Um, the case came across my group. People were like, you know, read this one. And um, so I, I looked into it and it's a very intriguing case. You know, it's almost pretty cut and dry what happened, to be honest, you know, when I look at it. But at the same time, we always want to be open-minded um, in a case, you know, just in case, you know, it's, it's something we didn't think it could possibly be. Uh, but you know, I, I'm, I try to go and not make it up my mind, but some things are very obvious. Okay. With this case. So she, poor little thing, she was only 19 months old and she went missing. So here's a little bit what happened. Um, I'm going to try to do this without reading the whole wiki to you. There's an entire Wikipedia on it. Um, and she was declared um, dead, um, actually, officially, on May 30th, 2017. So they finally just um, declared her as deceased then. Um, but she was the daughter of Trista Reynolds and Justin DiPietro. And basically what happened with the mother and father, they were never really an item. They were never really together. They had basically just got together, made a baby, is what it came down to. And pretty much the mother was raising the child. He was not really involved in the life and so forth. But apparently around that time, the mother was battling a drug addiction. Okay. So um, there was a little bit back forth. That maybe he would see the child here or there. Um, but one of the things that would happen is there are times that, um, you know, that when he had the child, the child would come back with bruises. There were definitely some concerns. Um, but what happened was she went into rehab right before this time. Matter of fact, let me see if it says the date. I'm not sure exactly um, the date there, but um, it might have been in October of that year. And she goes missing in December. Um, she went into rehab. I think there was some heroin and some things involved. She's trying to make her life better. She had put the child with her own family. I believe she was staying with her sister. So what is very interesting is the child, Ayla, had been placed with the father, but apparently the person who placed Ayla with the father was is somebody who worked for the, you know, social work or whatever, um, worked there was a family member of his. Okay, so one of the things they did, and her name was Karen Small, yeah, a Department of Human Services employee. Okay. So basically, she she kind of takes it upon herself to take the child. And the family that they had, there was nothing they could do about it, okay? And the, she didn't do any kind of background checks, okay? There was no checks of the home, and that's what they're supposed to do. If you take a child out of a home and you're going to place them in another home, you have to background check the entire family, okay? That's one of the things you got to do. You got to make sure the home is safe. You got to make sure there's enough room. And apparently they were in a, a small three bedroom and uh, his sister lived there and uh, his girlfriend lived there. And it was, it was kind of a cramped thing. You know, her, the sister's children were there. So it was a little bit of a cramped situation, but it, it was a very shady way. Okay. Of taking this child away um, from, you know, the home and everything like that. So, you know, take it away from the mother and basically take it away her custody. Okay, this was all because he had family. All right, so that happens. And then, so what happens is, it was, it was a matter of fact, it was just right before the disappearance um, that occurred. She did, the last time she had been seen, December 16th, it looks like she was reported December 17th missing, but the mother had just w days before applied to get custody back of this child. Now, there is apparently a text that was sent 
um, by the father. They were kind of battling back and forth here. Um, they weren't letting her see the child and things. He was saying, you will never see her again. So that apparently that text came right before she went missing. Red flag right there. Okay. There's a, there's a red flag. Another red flag that occurred too is right before she went missing, um, there was apparently Ayla's arm got broken and he made up a reason he was carrying groceries, holding her about walking through the door and things. And then he just somehow accidentally fell on her. Okay. And then um, they put her in a soft cast. Okay. So um, that br the breaking of the arm is very suspect, of course. And a lot of times if something like that happens, and a child has been put into a foster care situation or a custody care situation. Normally, the state's supposed to be involved and they're supposed to check that out, right? Hey, what, you know, kids have been taken out of homes for less than that. Okay, all of a sudden, this child is, was just placed and has broken arm and they've got bruises and everything. So nothing was done about that and everything. So then um, the disappearance and pretty much this ended up being... Uh, the state of Maine's one what, what of the biggest cases they've ever worked. It's the biggest criminal investigation and the third biggest missing person investigation, something like that, that they were saying. It was, it was incredibly, incredibly huge. And um, it's a very tragic case. And it's kind of one of those cases where, you know, with, with the mother, I feel really bad for her. You know, she's just trying to better her life. Things happen. People, you know, fall into drugs and things like that. She's trying to better her life. And he was pretty much not involved in this child's life up until then. He was he was very much involved. Another thing I did, um, I can't remember if I watched a video or I read an article. I believe I watched a video. Um, there was a situation where right before they took Ayla, they came into the sister's home and things like that. And um, Ayla was there. She went and then there was an officer. And the officer sat down and was kind of talking to the baby and everything. The baby was, of course, you know, cute and happy and everything. But then suddenly when the father walks in, she starts screaming. Okay. She started screaming. Okay. And then they still took this, this child out of the home. So there's definitely, that's another telltale sign that there's something shady with this father. Okay. And one of the things about it is they pretty much do not know where he is anymore. The mother did go to sue him. Um, she did um, put, put a lawsuit on him years ago. And let me see if I can find where that is. Um, after the animath. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't see it in here, but she did try to sue him and he he ended up going missing. So nobody knows where he is to this day. Um, nobody knows where he is, Justin DiPietro. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of read the case. I know everything is leaning to the father. We can kind of see that, um, especially if a text like that was sent, which apparently it was that you will never see her again. I just, you know, I kind of look at a case like this. If you didn't want this child, why did you take custody? What is, what is the point? Um, it kind of makes me wonder if we didn't want to pay child support or something. And that's what we did. But we also didn't want to be a father either. It's a very tragic case. So we're going to go, um, go ahead and look at it. Um, let's go ahead and look for my one deck and kind of shuffle this up. And then we'll go with a tarot read. I'm going to do a shadow. Um, Spirit's kind of directing me to do a, a shadow read. So I'm going to use the Deviant Moon deck for that. But this is, a, this case, um, it's amazing. I, I mean, I did a search on YouTube, you know, to see what readers have done it, you know, how many times maybe it's been done. They're still reading this case to this day. I mean, there are some that are only a month old that have read this case. And apparently they did get a lot of tips from psychics um, who gave their input, but nothing has ever really panned out. I personally feel this child may have been thrown away is kind of what I feel. So finding the child um, is probably going to be near impossible is kind of what I feel. 
after 10 years, I would find it very hard to find her um, at this point. I feel I feel a throwaway situation. But um, will he be, one of the things we'll look at is he guilty. Okay, we'll look at that. Um, I want to keep an open mind before I go in. And then will he possibly be brought to justice one of these days? Now, one of the things they did say they found at the scene um, was about a cup full of blood. Now, I'm not sure why they couldn't use that as circumstantial. But obviously, part of the case I probably should have mentioned, I neglect to mention, he said she must have been abducted. But there were people in the home. It was very close-knit quarters. Um, it seems like if somebody would have entered the house, um, with a with a small place like that, um, I I don't see how that's possible. Um, that they would not hear something. Um, this was not like a big home where it's where it's easy to do that and everything. So let's go ahead and see what we get. But yeah, his claim was she must have been abducted. But I don't know why they couldn't have got him on circumstantial. And we'll look at that too. Okay. Yeah, but I was surprised. How many people are still reading this case? Okay. Okay. Oh, I don't think that's that. Show me a little bit more about, like, will he be tried or anything like that? Let's see. Okay. Oh, maybe she's not. Okay. Yeah, there's a few I it's like they can't be it. But I wonder about these. Okay. All right, let's lower it down. There we go. So kind of what I get, um, I do get the word boyfriend. Even though he was not technically a boyfriend, that's about as close as it gets. Okay. Um, I do also get another one for a man. And I also have the card, someone knows something. So I feel there is another male that knows something, could be a family member. Um, now this, the missing, um, the Justin, it says will return. I wonder if he will return to the area. I do get a physical assault card is showing. I do get strangulation. And I do get physical abuse. Now, I do have the wanted card, so it's very possible they may one day charge him for this. I did get the card Rocky Area, so maybe she wasn't put in a dumpster necessarily, um, but I do have like a rocky type of landscape area, maybe is where she is. Now, we're going to go ahead and pull from the Deviant Moon. Let me get this ready. And we're going to kind of let the tarot talk to us and see. But there was definitely um, definitely physical abuse in here. This was this broken arm. Looks like no accident. We have lost our temper. Um, 
I do get a strangulation card. That's maybe the way we did it. I'm not sure, you know, and that's why I don't understand. If you if you don't want this child and everything, why did you get custody? I, I don't understand it, you know, if you don't want a child. That's the one thing that I'm, I'm very lost on. lose you guys okay so we've got the three of swords in the verse position that is the heartache card um definitely the family you know suffering the loss of this child the mother especially that makes me feel very strongly her of course there's a lot of heartache for this um you know and one of the things to get them to a healing place if at all possible hence the reversal um would be to at least try him or something you know, find this child and everything like that. And we do have the three of pentacles in the reverse position. Um, that can be my teamwork card, that kind of energy. And I feel like, you know, I know it's been, you know, 10 years. So it's just like it's grown cold. The case has grown cold. Less people are working on it at this point, which is really hard. I wish they would get back on it, though. And yes, the Empress is the mother of tarot. So, you know, this definitely just turned her world upside down and everything like that with the suffering with the loss of this child. But she has really tried to keep it alive. Um, I notice even still to this day, looking at some articles that I saw, she is trying to keep this alive and so forth. Yeah, we got the two of swords in the reverse position. That is about making a choice. Um, I kind of look at that and I feel like her choice to like go in rehab, it was a difficult one for her to decide. You know, if I say I have custody of my daughter, this, that, but obviously I'm very sick and I have to do this, you know, um, but if I go, you know, what's going to happen? I'm going to leave with family. And she thought for the most part she was safe. At least she thought... But of course, if, if you have something like this on your background, that you have drug history, your child could get taken away. So she also knew that risk was there. So this is a choice, you know, making this choice and so forth. Hence the reversal is something she beats herself up with all the time. But it's not her fault, you know, and that's one of the things I, you know, I would hope the mother would understand. It's not her fault. You know, things happen. People fall into drugs. You know, she's trying to make herself better for her and her child and everything, you know, it's not her fault. And then we have the sun reverse, you know, that just really um, leads to her innocence in the matter. Okay. Um, especially that, you know, we, we know she's in the clear. Um, that could be my innocence card and everything with the mother that she is, she is not behind this and so forth. And of course we have the nine of cups, which is about, you know, certain things she wishes for, and that is for him to be brought to justice for this. And of course, to have the child found. But when I see judgment, that's a hard one. Normally, um, when I see that, we may not necessarily see a justice situation in a missing person. That could be that the person, wait, it's, it's until they meet their maker in the afterlife that they actually get their judgment, like say by the spirit. They may not necessarily get it in the physical world. Um, so that is a hard one when I see judgment. Unless a justice card does pop up. And it's going to take a lot of patience for this, you know, as far as any more further action on this case. But I feel inevitably they'll probably do something on it. Um, you know, I would hope so. And it looks like the father shows as the king of wands in the reverse position. Uh, king of wands can have a temper. Uh, when it's reverse, it definitely can have a temper. And let's go ahead and look there and stuff. And yeah, look at the ten of pentacles. See the one little child hiding here and the people playing a game. This card has popped up before a missing person that he hid the child. And everything was about a strategy and a move and I'll just play the game this way and so forth. But the child was hidden basically from view. And with the Four of Swords energy, um, sometimes that can look like someone is deceased. Notice the person is just kind of laying there resting next to the Three of Swords. The Three of Swords is the Heartache card as well. 
Um, so, and they do look kind of buried when you, when you look in this card, they do look kind of buried. Yeah, let me go ahead and look here. Yeah, I see the, the seven of wands energy. I really, that makes me feel the mother. That's a stand up, stand your ground. That's what she did. Um, I saw, I saw a video of her chasing him from a courtroom, you know, going after him. What happened to her? Where is she? Where is she? You know, just really, you know, keeping this going is, is something she definitely does. Uh, but just standing up and standing your ground, you know, she is definitely trying to do that and so forth. Ayla shows us the page of cups, um, you know, little innocent. She might, she might be a water sign. That's a possibility. Um, that can be my child card sometimes for the missing person. The pages will show for the children. Just an innocent child, as we know. And then we've got that three of wands energy. Um, that is that is hopeful that it's possibly we could get this case solved. Where something kind of comes to light in some way. Notice the full moon kind of blowing light on those wands. Um, that something comes to light. Um, that maybe they could do a charge or something. But I know it feels kind of hopeless. It feels hopeless with that star reverse. But yes, with the tower, I feel just a very violent altercation took place that night just a, a loss just a blow of chaos this is the mars card um this is the mars card and it, it can be very violent so some kind of violence and then see the little people so that makes you feel she's kind of like just thrown away um after this violent altercation and let's go ahead and look here Yeah, looking at it, oh God, the state really needs to be held accountable. But we do have, and with the Ten of Swords, you know, which can be a death or a murder. Um, obviously, with the Ten of Swords, it can depict a dead body. Um, we do have that. But I feel like the mother, um, this Nine of Pentacles energy here, she gets more established and betters herself and so forth. I feel she, you know, she may be able to spearhead this and get this going. Um it's it's a possibility, but they would, of course, have to find him. Now, since I got that wanted card um, when I did pull that, that is that is a possibility one day they could charge him, that some kind of news could take place. But I really feel it's going to be a lot later. Um, it's going to be a lot later. And yeah, definitely when I see this card, and this is one of the reasons um, I like to use the Deviant Moon, as you can see, like, the parent yelling at the child and just screaming at him and abusing him and so forth. They, she was definitely in an abusive household. Uh, we definitely got some uh, physical abuse cards and things like that. But the child was definitely being physically abused, you know, yelled at and, and everything. And this is most likely why she screamed when they came, you know, the father, you know, walked in the room that day and so forth. That should be, you know, a telltale sign right there. I don't even know why they send children into something like that when when they scream like that you know don't they have any rights or anything don't they pay attention to these children so unfortunately um i feel like the mother's going to really keep this going uh with the case and things like that but i feel like you know i really feel like judgment in the afterlife you know finding this child at this point i kind of get a thrown away feel um so probably Ayla probably will never be found unless there was a confession, which I highly doubt there will be. Um, but let me, I probably should have grabbed my phone because now I can't look up anything. I'll be right back. Let me grab my phone so I can do keywords. Yeah, but with a text like he sent to her, right before Ayla went missing, I just have a hard time understanding why he wasn't taken in, especially with blood at the scene, you know, but maybe they didn't want to rush to it and have him get off for this. I understand that too, but it's been 10 years. Okay, so hold on one second. Let me get that. Ayla Reynolds missing. Let me try it again. Ayla Reynolds missing. Where was she from again? Wikipedia, Waterville, Maine. Reynolds was a child from Waterville, Maine, who 
who disappeared, age 19 months, on December 16, 2011. Okay, so she was in Waterville, Maine. Okay. Redfield, Maine. There is a Redfield, Maine. I was hearing, oh, it's Reedfield. I heard Redfield, but it's Reedfield. Okay. How far is that from Waterville, Maine? How far is Reedfield, Maine from Waterville, Maine? The drive from Waterville 36 to Reedfield minutes. is 32.3 miles. So I was hearing Redfield, Maine. I thought it was Redfield, but it actually brought me to Reedfield, Maine. Reedfield, Maine is 36 minutes away from Waterville. So it looks like we may have met, uh, went uh, it was south, south, southwest. We went southwest. So that would be on the I-95. So I believe we got out of the area. So we might be in the Reedfield main area if we're still there. If, if there's like somewhere buried, thrown bones, uh, you know, hopefully we weren't put in a dumpster. Um, I was kind of worried about that because very small, it would be very easy to do. Um, but I feel we went to Reedfield because I was hearing Redfield, but there is a Reedfield. It's very close. It's very close. Hearing the word pocket. I wonder if there was something in his pocket or something like that. I do hear that. And... Yeah, it's only about 32 miles out of there. It's about 32 miles um, distance. Hatchie, Hatchie, Pocahatchie, Maine. What is that? Hatchie, Hatchie, Hatchie. No. Polka, Maine. No, Here's some one. matching news articles. So say. Still thinking. One moment. Hearing the word photo, I feel there is something in a photo or maybe like the, maybe the police took a photo at the scene of something, which is really important and critical, but I just hear the word photo on that. I was trying to gather it. It was coming in really weird. Um, Central Maine. Carry something with central. I was hearing a central. I said central main. There is a central main dot com. Um, there is central main dot com is a website. I guess they do obituaries on there. Okay, so that's definitely my signal. Um, there is a central main dot com. I just heard central main. Central main dot com uh, puts obituaries on it, and um, so. That and apparently they do have other things are called that Central Maine. Oh, there is a Central Maine Community College, a Central Maine Power Company. Apparently, that is a very common thing in Maine. Um, that there's a lot of companies named that. So, I wonder if we're somehow connected. One obituary would make sense. Um, and that the child is pronounced dead, maybe she does have an obituary in there once. Um, but I feel there could be something surrounding with Central Maine. Like maybe a location, maybe maybe it is um, one of their areas or something like that, but some kind of connection with that. So I'll just write that down. But there is a centralmain.com and there are some businesses that start off central Maine. 
but it's kind of very telling there's obituaries on there. Okay, we know the child has passed. We know the child has passed. Hold on, what is that word? Dick Derby. Here's the definition of determinant. Having ex Victor Maine. Try again. Whoops. Victor Maine. No. It's not coming up. I, I feel like I feel like I'm hearing Victor. I'm hearing the word Victor. I do not know if that is a person or if that is like a street or something like that. That's what I was trying to Victor Avenue, Maine. Here's a map of Victor Avenue, Saco, Maine, 04072. There is a Victor Avenue out there, so I'll write Victor. I don't know where's oh that's in Saco, Maine. How far is Saco, Maine from Waterville, Maine? The drive from Waterville that's a little further. To Saco is ninety two. I definitely feel we go south. I definitely feel we go south from Waterville. Um, also, that was kind of pointing me to Saco, Maine, which is also south of the area. So Redfield, I feel we go Redfield, maybe uh, Saco, but I feel we definitely go south with this child. I, saw, I noticed Maine, there is a lot of water there. Um, there is a lot of, uh, obviously it's called Waterville, right? Uh, but there is a lot of water along the coast. So it's very possible she was put in water, that's possible. But I also got that Rocky area card. So I'm wondering if there is like a um, an area with a lot of rocks or big rocks. Like when I have a rocky area, I think of something pretty significant rock area. And then maybe could be in, in put in water around there because that's right on the coast there. That would be very easy um, to be able to do that. So that's probably part of the reason we go south is to try to get to the water. But, you know, finding her would be incredibly hard at this point. Um, but looking at if he would probably be brought in. So that's probably the best I could get. But I definitely feel we go south. Yes, I do get the justice card as I ask that question. So I feel one day, one day they're going to pick him up. They're going to do something. Um, I, you know, they definitely want to do that one day. How long it's going to take, I do not know. But that is pretty cool that I just drew justice right when I asked that question. Okay, right when I asked that question, I pulled that card itself. So, so I feel, they know he did it. The cops aren't stupid. They just need enough. But you know, it's it's been 10 years. They, they've they gotta, you know, it's due time. It's due time to make an arrest with what they've got. You know, I mean, they've got some pretty good stuff there. They've got a text message saying you'll never see her again. They've got a broken arm. They've got bruising and things like that. She was taken in a shady way. She was not taken in a legitimate way. Okay, they should hold that person accountable that placed the child, the family member. Okay, and then also, um, you know, blood at the scene. I so if a cup full of blood, I mean, think about that. Here's, think about this coming out of a toddler, about a cup full of blood. Okay, that's, that's not just a whoops, I bump myself or actually cut myself on something. That's a lot of blood. Okay, to find a cup full of blood at the scene. It's up right there. They should have, they should have, you know. But I, I, I'm sure they did their best. That apparently, they put a lot of manpower in man hour. So I'm not trying to badmouth it. I, I'm sure they put in everything they had and stuff. And I'm sure they're not done at everything, you know. But it's just a matter of, you know. But it's it's been, it's like, just charge the guy. Just charge the guy. Get it going, you know, really after all this time. But the justice card just pop up, guys. I'll let that be the last card of the read and stuff. Hopefully those little keywords may help somewhere. But um, yeah, I do feel, finding her, I feel was probably going to be impossible. Um, the only way she could ever be found any kind of bones remain is, is if he would confess. I feel he's too much of a jackass to ever do that. Uh, that's, that's not somebody who's going to do that. Uh, he doesn't give a damn and everything like that. But it does make me wonder, the one question I can't answer um, very well is, why would you want the child if you didn't want the child? You know, why would you want to, you know, take it out of the home? It kind of makes me feel when I tuned into that, actually, I feel more the mother, his mother, more wanted the child than he did. 
that there was some pressure more from family members to get the child uh, more than, than him wanting the child, if that makes sense. I think he might have uh, caved to pressure of the family for that one. I hope you guys enjoy my read.